What's up guys, CB Moni here back with another video and today we take a look at Windows Storage Spaces, a piece of software that's actually not known by many people but is actually really helpful and really powerful when it does work. So the basic idea of storage spaces is much like a RAID type of setup, allowing multiple drives to be connected together in a large storage pool or one large volume. With different levels of redundancy and kind of setups, there's definitely a lot you can do with these particular options. Where storage spaces actually different from a typical RAID setup is you can do it with any particular drive with no necessary hardware requirements. It can do with any interface, any drive type, any operating system provided Windows Storage Spaces is installed and overall works really, really well. So for example, if you have a 4TB internal drive and a couple external 2TB drives, they can work together for a nice large storage pool and there's really nothing else that you need to do about it. Now personally, I've been using Windows Storage Spaces on one of my servers for quite some time. This particular server is used as sort of like a dedicated quick read and write server with two WD RAID storage drives in there that are in sort of what is kind of like a RAID 0 setup. They're not as fast as a typical RAID setup but it basically stripes the data across all of them and just uses them as one large storage pool which is what a lot of people will be using this for. It allows for slightly better throughput speed but also too there is no redundancy. Now in terms of storage spaces there is also two redundancy options. We'll get to how it's all configured in just a moment but again much like RAID, it is just like a software option but a little bit easier to understand and also to use. Now as I did mention there are also two redundancy levels, so just like RAID you can have one drive fail, two drive, three drive, so on and so forth and that will depend on how many drives you have in the system. So for example if I set up three drives of redundancy, I'll need to have at least three drives to have that level of redundancy. Again four drives, four drives and so on and so forth but when it comes to redundancy there's definitely a lot of options in terms of Windows storage spaces. Now this makes expansion also too super easy, as all you need to do is click this button right here to add an extra drive, make sure the drive's plugged in and you are good to go. Again, whether you want to add another internal SATA drive, an internal SAS drive or even an external USB drive, it will all work without any weird configurations, it is super simple like that. So again, whether it's internal or external, it just simply works. And to top it off, it actually also too works from computer to computers. No real need for any special hardware. So in a typical RAID setup, if you wanted to move it to another computer, you'll have to take the RAID card or at least the same RAID chipset with you to make sure that the RAIDs are all configured as they were and in some cases, you can't even really move them too easily from computer to computer. Sure it can be done, but usually it is a little bit harder than what Windows Storage Spaces is actually offering. In terms of the ease of use, basically unplug them from the first computer, plug them into the second computer, wait about 5 or so seconds, do a restart and boom, Windows Storage Spaces is up and running with all your data safely configured. This was definitely demonstrated recently for me as my particular storage drive that runs my storage spaces actually had its OS drive die and whilst I was waiting for a new SSD to come in, I actually took those drives out of my server, plugged it into my desktop PC and it worked absolutely flawless. So it was definitely a really good example where the system died, took the drives out, plugged them into another system and boom it was off to the races. My 4 terabytes of data on each drive were still there and it was really an easy experience. Now at this point storage spaces is sound really good. However, with that being said, if you do some googling, you'll find there's also too a few issues when it comes to Windows Storage Spaces, and it can be actually a bit interesting to get your head around. With things like Storage Spaces offering more storage than what your drives can actually offer thanks to thin provisioning, and also choose just a lot of little quirks and perks here and there that aren't exactly found in a lot of RAID setups that I could probably talk about all day, but to keep this video simple and short, there's definitely quite a few quirks and sort of weird things that Windows Storage Space definitely throws up, whether it be in the performance front, the configuration front or the maintenance front, there's always a few weird things here and there. But speaking of performance, let's take a look at performance. If you are a gamer, this is also to another great way to add a whole ton of storage without really needing to change your setup really much at all. If you have a really large Steam library, again, really awesome way, grab yourself a couple cheaper drives, put them in a storage pool and you are off to the races. So taking a look at our performance numbers, obviously hard drives and storage don't exactly affect FPS, but when it came to actually loading up the games and just running them in day-to-day -day tasks, I found no real problems here. In terms of those games, they were running on a spanned volume, so there was no redundancy in this particular drive, so if one died, basically the whole thing is gone. However, I did find when gaming on these drives, there was real no noticeable difference between
between a standard mechanical drive and a large storage pool. Take a look at the synthetics when it came to our RAID Zero like actual uh, multi mode where we just had all the drives in a large pool with no redundancy going on, we found perfect speeds, just about the same if not better than what we would have got if it was just the standard mechanical drive alone. But once we started adding parity drives, speeds started to tank. Now whilst I can't exactly find any documentation on how this particular actual array actually works in terms of, well, the software configuration, what it does look like is rather than writing the data to the first drive and then it parroting and mirroring off the actual drive through software on the actual server, what I found it to be doing is actually copying the files to each one of these drives. So if you have three drives in parity, you're gonna have a much slower experience than two drives in parity or even just one large storage pool. Again, I can't exactly find any documentation or explanation as to how it works, but from my understanding at this point in time, unless someone can definitely correct me down in the comment sections, it does look like it's just copying your data to each particular drive. Now, this can be good as it's gonna be copying everything on the fly. However, for large video files, like what I'm working with all the time, this can be an absolute nightmare to deal with. However, one thing that I did notice is when you're doing small files, like Word documents, photos and that kind of stuff, it was actually perfectly fine and I could not even tell the difference between the pool drives or the three parity drives. There's real no difference and I found when it came to small data, it was basically fine there. But again, when it comes to large data across a parity array, I did find some weird results here. Now I was running Windows 8.1 with all the latest updates, so it should be running the latest version of our storage spaces, so it still appears we still have these issues, even though these were brought up and found on the very first edition of Windows storage spaces. I found also too when installing games, things did get a little bit slower, especially when they're in parity mode. But overall, if you're just gonna be using a large pool option where you're not doing any parity for your games, this is actually a really good and cheap and inexpensive option. I did look into doing some fixes for performance and I did find some fixes running through PowerShell, but they took a really long time to apply and I couldn't exactly get it working fully. So definitely expect a follow-up video where we take a look at this a little bit more in depth with PowerShell, a little bit more down the line. But if you do want to get a little bit more advanced with PowerShell, definitely storage spaces also too can support that. All in all, Windows storage spaces are really, really useful when they're done right. Whilst it's not a replacement for a proper RAID setup or even a proper software RAID setup, it does do a good job for those wanting to set up some storage fast and simply. And also too, it is pretty easy to manage. If you're looking just to grab a few cheap one terabyte drives, put them in a pool for a large Steam library drive, it is a really good option. And the fact that there's no price around storage spaces, meaning it's a really good option for those of you who are on a tight budget. The ability to move the drive from one computer to another is also too really good as if you happen to upgrade your system, you can just unplug all those drives, plug them into the new one, and your Steam library is perfectly intact. I did find when it comes into parity and mirroring, these guys do slow down, but again, if you're just in a large pool mode where you have all the storage of all the drives together, it really doesn't do a too bad job. But thanks to the fact that it's found on most consumer and even server operators, system releases of Windows since like 8.1, 8 and even Windows 7, really everything onwards from that does get Windows storage space support and it seems to be getting better and better as time does go past. Again, whilst there's no dedicated replacement for dedicated RAID hardware which will run circles around Windows storage spaces, for a cost of absolutely zero dollars, storage spaces are not only easy to set up, manage, maintain, but also too, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to get into. And I found it really, really awesome and surprising that not exactly everybody uses it or even knows what it is about. But do let me know what you run down in that comment section. Do you just bite the bullet and buy the more expensive option in terms of storage drives or do you run something similar to storage spaces to get all your storage without having to pay the massive price tag? Let me know down below. Otherwise guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.